We are going to cover many BeamNG related questions. If you're well adept with BeamNG, then please consider bestowing this video upon new players to help them out with numerous roadblocks. The main points we'll be covering are is BeamNG worth it, how to download BeamNG Drive, and how to play BeamNG multiplayer. We'll also cover many other important subjects, such as what kind of system you'll need, how to play the game, how to set up controls, and how to pay me. I'll place timestamps for easy navigation throughout this video. And if you haven't seen my channel yet, then welcome to Talks with Noise. I have tons of other BeamNG related content, so if this video interests you, then please consider subscribing. Firstly, is BeamNG Drive worth it? Most people buy BeamNG because the game is really well known for its realistic crashing, but in my opinion the game's driving mechanics are very underrated. The physics model is grounded well enough to allow for many different types of driving and avid players love BeamNG for drifting, off-roading tracks, and pretty much anything that is motorsports related. Realistic driving is BeamNG's main selling point outside of wrecking, and if you're looking for an all-around good driving simulator, then BeamNG is certainly worth it. If you want a visual on something such as off-roading, then I do have a video to showcase it. In terms of BeamNG's gameplay, it's very drop and drive. You choose one of the current 16 existing maps, and there are over 30 custom vehicles with a seemingly infinite number of variants, and upon choosing from those, you drive. That's the gist of this game, it's driving. And even though it sounds pretty simple, you can spend weeks or even months trying to not seem like a monkey behind the wheel. W wait a minute. A freaking monkey driving? <laughs> what the heck? If you want a little extra, you can download mods from BeamNG's repository, and all of the repository mods are developer approved. Most of the mods consist of different vehicles and even more crazy maps to choose from. There are pages upon pages of mods, and the list continues to grow as more people submit their creations. The fact that we can download approved mods from BeamNG without going to a shady website is a big thumbs up from me. But what about the cons? Well, BeamNG does have a dated feel to it, and navigating through the menus is sometimes difficult to figure out. Customizing keybinds? Well, see you next year. Changes take forever to apply. Racing is also very, um... Let's just say the AI looks at you through the eyes of Mike Tyson. But it is highly likely that we'll be seeing improvements, as the development team is expanding and we're getting more solutions introduced to the game. If you're looking for some structured gameplay, then there is some indie style content. Scenarios, for example, are a collection of mini games similar to old console game objectives. You can think of Tony Hawk Pro Skater missions, but with cars and less Tony Hawk. There are also campaigns, and they continue to maintain the same mini game feel. Light Runner and Time Trials are time trials to improve working on laptops and this little multiplayer box, uh, we'll get to that later on. So back to the main point, is this game worth $25? 20 pounds, 23 euros, 185 yen are a few boxes of sugar swirl cereal. Well, if what I mentioned sounds interesting, then yes. If you want to give BeamNG a try, you may be wondering, how do you download BeamNG Drive? For starters, BeamNG Drive is only available for computers. You can find Beam on Humble Bundle, but the majority of people, including myself, get it off of Steam because once the updates drop, they are immediately available. Based on what of the people have said it takes Humble about a month for an update to process, but they also raise money for charity, so that's up to you. Because I have Steam, I'll be showing you how to get BeamNG Drive there. And if you're new to Steam, it's just like downloading GameStop to your computer, where you can go in, buy games, download them, and play them. And in case you can't find it on the internet, then you can find it through the link that I provided in my description. There you can install Steam to your computer just like any other program, make an account, and then open Steam on your computer. Once you are on Steam and logged into your account, you can go over to Store, click on the search and then type beamng.drive. Click on the game and then click add to cart and then make sure you purchase it for yourself and then enter in whatever purchasing information that you have. Once you have purchased the game, you can find all of the games you own through the library tab, which is where you'll find BeamNG Drive and you can click on install. And whenever the game is downloaded, you can begin to play it. If you don't want to open Steam every single time to play BeamNG Drive, then you can right click on BeamNG, hover over manage, and then click add desktop shortcut, which as you imagine will make a desktop shortcut. But before you download BeamNG Drive, Drive, make sure that your computer can handle it. It's not the most demanding game, but you'll need something equivalent to at least a potato. But what exactly do you need to run BeamNG Drive? Certainly you'll need a computer, not a console, and you'll need at least 8 gigabytes of RAM. You will also need a CPU that is better or equal to a Ryzen 7 1700 and a GPU that is equal or better to an R9 290 or a GTX 970. In other words, what? Let's uh, try to simplify this. To determine if your computer meets minimal requirements, go to your computer search bar and type in system information. If you are using Mac, then I am sorry to tell you that you probably can't even play BeamNG.
Damn it, Steve Jobs. In system information, you can see how much RAM you have installed. Here I have 32 gigabytes because video editing makes your computer cry, but within BeamNG, I don't even use half of that. But can our CPU and GPU handle BeamNG? Well, the system information window says that my CPU is a Ryzen 7 5800X, and if I go to Passmark CPU, which the link is in the description below, I can find this little CPU window and type my information there. If the score of your CPU is above a 14 1800, then it should be good to run BeamNG. For specking out your GPU, you can go over to System Information, then go over to Components, click on Display, and find your system's GPU. Next, navigate over to Passmark GPU, which is again found in this video's description, and you can enter in your video card's information into the Find Video Card search. If your GPU score is above an 8300, then you should be alright for Beam, but of course if you're building a PC, then more headroom is always better, and that's with all components. With an 8300, 300, you'll probably be lowering your graphics settings, but honestly, I don't think that takes away from the core experience of Beam. And if your GPU happens to be built into your CPU, then you can type in your CPU's information into the GPU section of Passmark, but unfortunately, it's probably not going to come close to the minimal 8300 requirement. In terms of storage, I would go for 50 gigabytes, and I would recommend using a solid state drive as I would with any game. If that's all set, then you should be good to run Beam and G Drive. If you are using a laptop, a Nintendo DS, or a leapfrog. Everything that I've said here applies, so please watch this video again if you've missed anything before asking questions. If you see somebody in a Beam and G chat asking about computer specs, then smite them with this video along with a timestamp. I think it could help quite a few people. Next up, how do you play Beam and G Drive? On the main menu, you can find this icon called Free Roam, which is where the majority of players spend their time. And amongst the selection of maps, the best one you can start out on is one called Grid Map V2, because it's wide open, but it still has some obstacles to try and avoid. And just as a heads up, it takes forever to load into maps as it does with many other games. Once you're in the game, you can use the up arrow to begin driving, left and right to steer, and the back arrow to stop or to reverse. If you want to try your hand at drifting, then you can hit the space bar to pull your handbrake, which will lock up your back wheels. But if it's your first time playing, then who cares about control, because your primal instincts will direct you right into a wall for that crunchy goodness. And here's a pro tip. If you want to reset, you can press R to do it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And because I imagine you would get annoyed with respawning in the exact same location, you can reset your home position by pressing Control and Home. And then you can also access that home position by pressing Home or R. Pressing the Insert key will also just flat out reset your vehicle. If you get bored of using the truck, you can use the Escape key. Go over to the Vehicles tab and then choose a different vehicle, which you'll probably choose something that's faster so that you can slap a wall at higher speeds. But once you get bored of cargo crash, you might find yourself trying to control your vehicle and try to start driving it around. And just so you know, when you're driving at high speeds in Beam and G, the vehicles don't like to turn. Sure, it starts to feel like you're driving on ice, but that's because you're controlling a vehicle with a keyboard and you're also driving like an ape. Controlling your vehicle in Beam and G is the tip of the iceberg, and unfortunately for those with a low temper and a low attention span, that is the end of the iceberg, because now we're going to cover realistic shifting, which may very well be the end of your iceberg, because now the pain will begin to worsen, as there are many newbie-friendly features that you can begin to strip away and reveal Beam's true colors. To enter into the world of manual shifting, you have to go to the vehicle tab and choose a vehicle with the letter M next to it, which of course stands for manual. If you have already done this, then you have noticed that the vehicle behaves just like an automatic, but that's because the handicap features are currently enabled. To disable these features, go to Menu, click on Options, then head over to Gameplay where you'll find Gearbox Safety Assistant. And because you like living on the edge, you're going to turn that off. By pressing Escape, you can get back to your vehicle, and then you can press Q, which starts to bring on the pain. Press Z to downshift and X to upshift, and you'll notice that the clutch is automatically engaging and disengaging for you. And of course, that doesn't happen in real life, so we're going to strip away that feature here in a second. But as of right now, with that feature enabled, it's a good idea to start practicing how to increase your speed and also, more importantly, decreasing your speed without over revving your engine. And no, this is not the sound that you want to be aiming for. Once you think you have gotten manual shifting figured out, I'm here to tell you that you have figured out the easy part. Now we're going to enter into a mode that most keyboard players wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. By hitting escape, going over to options, and then going over to gameplay, you can find the clutch assistant and disable it. And now you're 
clutch no worky by itself. But if you press the shift key, it'll disengage the clutch and allow you to shift your gears without damaging them. Granted, you have to give enough time for your clutch to engage and disengage. As for these very annoying artificial gear grinding sounds that you get whenever you damage your gears, um, the damage model is being upgraded. And just a note of encouragement here, you will be stalling your vehicle multiple times, so use the V key to start your engine and also make sure that you're pressing the shift key to disengage your clutch when you're starting your engine. Or the most common practice is to stick your vehicle into neutral. If you do practice and master true manual keyboard shifting, then welcome to the 1%. After you have given up on shifting, you can start trying out various other maps. And you can add life to other maps by enabling traffic. To enable traffic, you want to go to this radial menu, which is done by pressing escape. Go to the microchip, go to the traffic light, and then go to the single vehicle, and then voila. You have now spawned in many Texas drivers. And from this point on, you can do as you please. Some players like to abide by the traffic laws, and I like to throw myself around like it's my last time driving. It's all tons of fun, and of course in that radial menu there's other options to try out, such as police chases, and of course having every vehicle chase you. I said fun. This this is not fun. With all of the mentioned gameplay, it's important that we go over controls for BeamNG, which is all listed under the controls panel, which holy crap there's a lot. I'll list the most important ones in this video. As had been previously mentioned, the arrow keys will allow you to control your vehicle, V will allow you to turn your vehicle on and off, spacebar will allow you to pull your parking brake, shift will allow you to disengage your clutch, Z shifts down, X shifts up, insert key will reset your vehicle, control home sets a home position, and home will allow you to go back to that home position. Now for some unmentioned controls. You can press shift and press C in order to get into something called free cam. While you're in free cam, you can right click to look around and use W, A, S, and D to move the camera around the map. Pressing shift while doing these movements will allow your camera to move faster. You can also adjust your camera speed by using alt and using the scroll wheel on your mouse. The reason why free cam is so important is because you can fly to different sections of the map and then you can press F7 to make your vehicle spawn in. The vehicle will drop exactly where your camera is at and then you can use the 1 and 2 key to get back to your vehicle. There are a ridiculous number of keybinds for Beam and G, so if you're looking for something specific, you can always look in the controls panel, but these tend to be the most essential. If you get yourself Beam and G Drive, at very minimal, try to get yourself a controller. And if you don't mind shelling out extra money, then definitely go for a wheel. Once you get the previous sections of this video figured out, it's a good idea to give multiplayer a try. And that's right, Beam and G does have a multiplayer feature. At the moment, it's not officially supported, but it is easy to access. To install Beam and G multiplayer, go to the Beam and P link that I have in this video's description. Click on download client and begin installing it like any other program. Once the Beam and P launcher icon is located on your desktop, you can click on it to run it and it'll sync up with your Beam and G installation. When Beam and P launches, it'll take you to a main menu screen that's very similar to Beam and G's, except you have an icon that says multiplayer. Once you click on multiplayer, try and make yourself an account or else the game is just going to appoint you a name that's called guest with a variation of numbers. Other than that, you can sort through servers and you can join other players. I would stick to official servers because I think you could potentially download a virus from a server that has a bunch of mods on it. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think that's a possibility, so... Uh, just something to note. Anyways, I think I covered everything that I wish I had known whenever I started Beam and G. And something I'd like to point out in case you're new, I release Beam and G videos every single Friday, so if you happen to be going through a lot of my videos and you enjoy them, then please consider subscribing. And for those who have long awaited, I also happen to have stuck up a new Discord server, which you can find down in the description below. YouTube channel members will get priority over events, but I'm hoping that doesn't become an issue for quite a while. Again, thank you guys so much, and wait a minute. Tossboy420 became a member under the bankrupt driver option. Why? You could buy so much ramen with $25, or you could buy Beam and G a second time. T toss. I'm not going to spend your money wisely. Probably a bathtub full of ramen. No, but honestly, thank you guys for becoming a member, and thank you to everybody who has subscribed. I never would have imagined this happening 90 days ago, but here we are. I will try my best to stay on schedule, and until then, see ya. Bye-bye.